Hello. In this tutorial we will try to imitate a jelly-like material by using thinking particles operator, vertex to particle, to create soft body. Go to create panel, standard primitives. Create a geosphere in the scene. Set the radius to 40. Set the segments value to 8. Go to the extended primitives, and create a chamfer box in the scene. Select it and go to the Modify panel. Set the length, width, and height values to 80. Set fillet value to 8. Set the length, width, and height segments to 10. Set fillet segments to 4. Select the two objects and move them upward. Select standard primitives, and create a box beneath them. We will use this box as a deflector, so the objects will fall on it. Increase its size a bit. Leave the segments values as they are. Select the Create tab. From the drop-down list choose Particle Systems. Add a thinking particle system to the scene. Select it and open the user interface. Create a new particle group, and name it Particles. Select the Master Dynamic and disable Edit on the fly. Create a new dynamic set, and name it Create Particles. From the Operator's drop-down list choose Generator. Add a Vertex to Particle Operator to the scene. Click the Pick Object button and select the Geosphere, and the Chamfer box. Select them in the list, and from the Group drop-down list choose Particles. Enable Trace Particles to Vertex. This will make the objects follow the particles. From the Type drop-down list choose Spring. For now, leave the other parameters as they are. Now we have to add some motion. Create a new dynamic set. Name it Dynamics. From the Operators drop-down list choose Initiator. Add AP Pass Operator to the scene. From the Group drop-down list choose Particles. From the Operator's drop-down list choose Dynamics. Add a new Deflector Operator to the set. Link it to the Particles group. From Helpers, add a Node Helper to the set. Connect it to the Node input of the U Deflector. With the Node still selected click Pick Node button. Select the ground box from the scene. Hide the unused parameters. This dynamic set will handle the collision between the particles and the floor. Create another dynamic set. Name it Forces. Add AP Pass Operator to the set. From the group drop-down list choose Particles. From the Operator's drop-down list choose Dynamics. Add a Force Operator to the set. Link it to the Particles group. From Helpers, add a point three Helper to the set. Set the Z value to minus 1. This will give the direction of the force. Link the vector output of the helper to the direction input of the force. Hide the unused parameters. From Dynamics, add a friction operator to the set. This will slow down the particles. Set the rotation friction to 0.2. Select the force operator, and set the strength to 100. Select the Vertex to Particle Operator to verify if both objects in the list are set right. Sometimes when you set the parameters for both at the same time, only one gets modified. All it's ok now. Let's test the simulation. As you can see, the result is not really what we need. Open the Thinking Particles user interface and select the Vertex to Particle Operator. Increase the volume samples. The bigger this value is the less the objects should deform. Set also the Spring Constant to 2. Select the Master Dynamic and run the simulation. As you see there is no visible change. 
Select the master dynamic and unset the cache. This will erase the recorded animation. Very important. Select the master dynamic. Under renderer subsampling group of controls, enable samples per second and set the value to 90. Enable render subsampling checkbox. Choose samples per second and set the value to 90. You need at least 90 subsamples per second to get the solution calculated right. If you don't set this value you get unexpected results, whatever values you give to the operator. Drag the slider to see the changes. Now the result looks much better. Open the thinking particles UI. Select the vertex to particle operator and set the volume samples value to 3, so the shapes will deform less. You can see that these settings are general. They are applied to all the objects in the list. Now all is OK. You can now cache the simulation. Select a file and hit record. As you see all it worked fine. So keep in mind to increase the samples per second to a number around 90 subsamples. Okay, now let's prepare the scene for rendering. Go to Create Panel, Lights tab. From Standard Lights, add a target direct to the scene. Create a camera from the perspective view by clicking Ctrl plus E. Enable Show Safe Frame. Create a plane in the top view to render it as a floor. Hide the box used as a deflector. Increase the length and width of the floor plane. Open the render dialog. In the assign renderer rollout choose final render. Set the size of the frame to whatever dimension you want. Click on the Final Render tab. Enable anti-aliasing, and leave it to default settings. From the Options rollout, enable Caustics. Click on the Indirect Illumination tab. Expand the Caustics rollout. Enable Surface Caustics should be checked. Enable Show Photons in Viewport, to see the photons after the first render. Close the Render dialog. Select the direct target light. Set shadows to on. From the drop down list choose final render ray traced shadows. Expand the final render photons rollout. For caustics you need a light to emit photons. Turn on final render photons. Set the energy to 30. This will increase the effect of the photons. Set the caustics light rays to 500,000. In the light cone group of parameters, Increase the hotspot in the falloff. Arrange the light as you like. Create another Omni light and decrease the intensity multiplier to round 0.5. We will use this light as a fill light. Now it's time to create the materials. Create a simple white material for the floor. Create a new material and set the type to Final Render Advanced. Set the diffuse color to a light red. Set the reflect color to a dark gray. Set the blurry value to 1. Set the refract color to a dark red. Duplicate the material. Name the first material red and the second green. Change the colors for the green material. Drag the red material to the chamfer box, and the green material to the geosphere. Close the material editor. The last step is very important. Right click each object and select object properties. Click on the final render properties tab. Under the Caustics group of controls enable Send Caustics. 
Then click OK. Do this for the other object also. Open the Render dialog, and hit Render. The materials look good, but they are too light. After the render you can see the photons in the scene. Select the direct target light and, under the Photons tab, decrease the energy to 20. Open the Material Editor and make the colors a little darker. Render the image again. OK all looks fine now. So there are three steps to create caustics and final render. You have to enable photons to be emitted by the light. You have to enable send caustics in the object properties. And you have to enable caustics in the renderer. That's all for now. Experiment with different settings of the vertex to particle operator. Thanks for watching. Visit www.community.ro for more.